So step one, of course, you need to upload your data set. And like I said, your data does not need to be clean, so you do not need to invest a lot of time before getting started. Once you have uploaded your data set, you will use the Automa part of the platform to train various machine learning models. And to do so, you configure what we refer to as a workflow. Really, you only need to specify two things. What is it you want to predict? That's the label. And what is it you want to optimize for? That's your objective. For everything else, there are strong default settings that you can trust. So for example, feature extractors and models are automatically matched to your data set and use case. Once you have configured your workflow, the platform will automatically train various machine learning models, trying to find the best one for you. We also sometimes refer to them as solutions. And once you have generated these trained machine learning models, you could just stop here, right? Any of those solutions are ready to be downloaded and deployed into production. Or you could decide to improve one of these solutions even further. And that's what we're going to be looking at right now. So you generate a dashboard and a dashboard really is a way to, you know, collect all the information related to your solution. And it also helps you version and manage all of the associated data sets. What you want to do first is you want to assess the current performance of your machine learning model. So that's the score and that's the number that we're looking at here. So you can see the training and the validation score. And it's really this number that we're now looking uh, into improving. So to improve the performance of your machine learning model, you use a data quality management feature. And um, what you need to do is you need to specify which, uh, which aspect of the solution you would like to improve. So here it's the accuracy, but it could also be, for example, fairness. Um, and once you launch this task, the platform will automatically determine which samples have a negative impact on the model performance. And these results are then turned into actionable recommendations that you can use to debug your data. So in this particular use case, um, the recommendations actually show you which samples likely have a wrong label. So you can see in the first row here, um, the image shows that it's a nine, but actually the label says it's a five. So that's clearly wrong. So you clean that label and you go through the data set, starting, of course, with the samples that have the most negative impact on your model performance. Once you have cleaned your training data set, you re-upload it and you're now ready to retrain your machine learning model. So the model itself stays the same, but we use the newly cleaned training data set. And of course you can repeat the cycle, right? You can keep generating recommendations, cleaning your training data set and retraining the actual model. And so if you do that, after a few iterations, you will actually see an improvement in the performance in the score of your machine learning model. So if you remember, that was the number that we were looking at before and our accuracy now actually has gone up. So it's also important to note that, th that this is a very efficient process because with each sample that you clean, you know that you will likely see a change in the score. So once you've reached a performance that you're happy with, you can download the solution. And the solution comes with a very detailed readme, which contains various figures and interpretability insights, detailed instructions, everything you need. It's also fully standalone, so you get all the code you need to generate your own, recommend <laughs> your own predictions. And it has a REST API and is fully dockerized, so it's very easy to deploy. Right. So those are the seven steps. Just to summarize, step one, uploading your data. Step two, using AutoML to train various machine learning models. Step three is picking one of those solutions and trying to, you know, the one that you want to improve. Step four is assessing your current performance. And then step five is generating recommendations and cleaning your data set off platform. You then retrain your solution and you repeat the cycle of generating recommendations and cleaning your data set until you're happy with the performance, and then you can download the final solution. So as you can see with steps four, five, and six, cleaning and training actually go hand in hand, and the model and the data are considered together. And with the recommendations that you're getting, um, you know that you're actually cleaning the parts of the data set that will actually make a difference. So you're not just like wasting your time with cleaning random parts of the data set. Right, so that's kind of the overview. Let's now look at a real world example. So let's imagine we're working in the financial service industry and we have a historical data which shows which of our customers defaulted on their, on their loan. And we would like to use this historical data 
to build a machine learning model which will allow us to classify future customers into acceptable and unacceptable credit risk categories. Now, we don't want this model to just be accurate. We actually also want it to be fair in terms of gender. So this is a very realistic use case because the EU has already classified um, credit scoring as a high risk AI system. And so fairness will be a mandatory requirement for all credit scoring applications in the future. So before I'm going to show you what uh, we did on the platform to solve this task, I'm also going to take the opportunity to point out that the platform itself is actually fully dockerized, and so it can be deployed and installed on any Linux system. So that could be in the cloud, it could be, you know, on-premise, whatever you prefer. And what I'm going to show you right now is currently running live on an AWS instance. So what is it we did to solve this task? So we started by uploading the data set. So this is the training data set. Um, you can see it has 4,000 samples. And down here, we see all the input features. Um, there's three different kinds of features. Um, there is personal information on the loan applicant. So we can see their age, and we can also see their gender. And then the second category is um, information on their history with a bank. So for example, here, we can see the credit history. And finally, there is information on the loan that they're applying for. So here, for example, we can see the purpose or, of course, the credit amount. The quantity that we want to predict, that's the acceptable risk. So this is what we will be using as a label. And like I said before, it can be acceptable or unacceptable. OK, so that's the data set. Having uploaded the data set, we created a workflow to train various machine learning models. And you can see here that we generated a total of 60 solutions. And we could have just stopped here, right? We could have downloaded any of those solutions and just used it in production. But instead, we decided to improve one of those solutions even further using the data quality management feature. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Um, as I said before, it allows you to summarize and manage all the information related to your solution. And it also allows you to access the data quality management feature. So to do that, we use this improved data button up here and we choose the version that we would like to improve. We then specify which, which aspect of the solution we would like to improve. And here we're using equalized odds as a fairness measure. And in this case, we also need to specify the positive outcome. So that would be an acceptable credit risk. And we need to specify that we want to be fair in terms of gender. So once we've configured um, these settings and we launch the task, the platform will automatically determine which samples have a negative impact on our model performance. And we can then download those recommendations and use it to use them to debug or clean our data. In this particular use case, we use the recommendations to rebalance the training data set until we clean 250 samples in each cleaning iteration. OK, let's now look at some actual results. So this is what happens if you do not follow the cleaning recommendations. So you can see the green line here shows the evolution of the accuracy score over the five cleaning iterations that we did, a perfectly accurate model would have an accuracy score of one. And you can see we're not improving that. And then the orange line down here actually shows the evolution of the equalized odds so of the fairness score. A perfectly fair model would have an equalized odds score of zero. And again, we're not getting much closer. So a random cleaning strategy is not very efficient. Let's look at what happens if we do follow the recommendations. So in this case, again, the green line shows the evolution of the accuracy score. And yes, there is a small dip here in the beginning. That's very common if you're trying to optimize for fairness and accuracy at the same time. But then, you know, our accuracy score actually stays flat. The equalized odds score, however, we see a significant change here. So you can see we're going from 0.4 in the beginning all the way to 0.04 for the final solution. So that's an order of magnitude improvement in the fairness score. So that's pretty impressive and we're pretty happy with that. And we can now download the final solution up here. So this solution can now be used in production and can be used to predict um, if future customers have an acceptable or an unacceptable credit risk. So I hope this short demonstration has shown you how easy it is to build a successful machine learning model with the modulus platform and how powerful DCAI can be.